All right, windows, exterior door. Um, all right, windows and doors. Uh, important parts of the structure. Carpenters uh, should be familiar with uh, building codes when you're dealing with windows and doors. Proper insulation is crucial to avoid leaks in water and air infiltration. Um, windows and doors are probably one. Who, who's no fan? Oh, that's mine. Second. I'm sorry. I don't know. Sorry, Alright, uh, windows are made out of multiple different materials, uh, aluminum, wood, uh, vinyl, uh, fiberglass, composites. Uh, when you're looking at a window, the window itself is, um, is a unit that there's massive differences in quality, okay? Used to, Polo windows were the best. Um, you know, in, in the 1980s, if you had Pella windows, you were the, you know, and you were in the people on Snobville. Everybody has a Snobville on their dad, right? Um, so, but then what's happened over the years is now Pella's got what they call their pro line, their home line. So now you got like two or three different levels of Pella. Of, of Pella. Same thing with Anderson for several years when Anderson came out. Anderson and Anderson. The difference with an E and an O. Uh, you know, everybody was like, you want, you want to have Anderson windows, you don't want to have Anderson windows. And then now, now they both had, uh, have what you would consider to be their home line and their professional line. And then they've got their, their elite high-end line. Um, so name brands really don't mean as much as they used to. Uh, and that's pretty much across the board. Everybody now has their cheap uh, brand, and then they have their, hey, this is what we're going to sell to the, to the uh, people who want something really nice. Uh, so don't always look at the name brand or the type of window and decide whether it's better or worse than the other type. Because uh, there's some vinyl windows that are very, very good, and there's some vinyl windows that are crap. I mean, like literally, they're going to last two or three I've got some Anderson windows that I just put in. Anderson windows, not Anderson. Um, and now I will admit it's in my son's bedroom and he's rough on everything. But it's only been in for about a year and a half and it needs to be replaced. I'm not talking about the glass, I'm talking about the actual physical part of the window. Um, so, I don't believe any of this crap. Um, now about metal, what do they mean by metal? Are they talking about steel? Yes, steel is probably stronger than wood. If they're talking about aluminum, uh, I don't necessarily think that they're, it's stronger than wood. Um, manufacturer standards is the Window and Door Manufacturers uh, Association. The American Architectural Manufacturers Association, the Canadian Standards Association, IBC and the IRC, are, in my opinion, are, are probably the higher level in which you're looking at code and standards. Um, here's the thing. You guys all took government class, right? Yep. So, what takes precedent? Local code? Or national code? Local. Whichever one's more stringent, right? Whichever one's more stringent. So, same thing goes uh, for laws, same thing goes for codes. So, if it says you can, if the federal law says max speed limit, you can go with 70. Um, you know, if there's a local code that says you can only go 45, you can only go 45. Whatever's the most stringent. Uh, so, you're always looking at that because there's a lot of local codes that are less stringent than the national code. And in that case, national code takes precedent. Is what 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 do you think happens with the codes? They get outdated. They get outdated. Cities don't really have enough money 
to update their code every two or three years with the national code. So a lot of times the local code will either be a lot more stringent or it will be outdated. Uh, now, hopefully, if you have a code enforcer, every time IRC and, uh, uh, gets, or the national, or the uh, IRC, or the IBC gets updated, they get a copy of it, and then they go through their local code and update what the changes are. But you know, that's saying that your local code enforcer isn't completely overwhelmed by everything he's doing because he's got 75 buildings that he's inspecting every week. He's got all the rentals that, are, that need to be inspected every once a year, and he's got time to even do any of that. So uh, it's really, you got to watch codes. They'll come back and bite you. If you think you know what the code is, a lot of times it will come back and bite you because they will change it. Parts of a window. All right. So this is a double hung window. Uh, but all the parts are pretty much the same in all windows, but that is a double hung window. So the sash is the pieces of the window that slide up and down opening portions of the window, the functioning portions of the window. In this case, there is a, since this is a double hung, this sash moves this way and this sash moves that way. All right. Uh, the top and the bottom rail are um, the portions of the sash. All right. Uh, the jam is the side of the window. Okay, the style is the portion in which the, the sash rides in. Uh, sill is the bottom. This is called sill. What do we call the one outside? Rough sill, right? Because it's not quarter part of the window, it's what the window sets on. So it's the rough sill. This is the finished sill. It's actually on the window. And if you notice, most of the time the sill has a slope. That way water hits it, it goes to the outside. Um, drip cap is a uh, it goes above the window and normally sets on the outside so the water can't drip in behind the top. And mullion, we don't have mullion in this one, but it's where two windows come together. That mullion strip in the middle. So if you're going to take maybe you got these windows here, we got five or six windows together. Each one of those verticals where the windows come together is called a mullion. Um, and muttons are the bottoms. Um, so we got different grid patterns. Um, I don't even know why they're going into this. This is kind of dumb in my opinion why they're talking about it. Because uh, they don't even have the most common types. A colonial. They don't have colonial. They don't, I mean, they're just showing you that there's different button types. Um, They're calling three basic types, sliding, swinging, or fixed. I don't really agree with that. But, uh, a double hung window it has two sashes that slide up and down past each other. They're calling a double hung window a sliding window. I don't call that. That's not what I call it. This is what I call a sliding window, one that goes sideways, like a sliding door. Um, I think you get into double hung, single hung, sliding, awning. I think there's about eight different types. Um, so. Uh, How many times you said seven? Sorry, three? There's a bunch. Okay. There's a bunch of times. They're grouping them into three. In my opinion, they should break <clears throat> swinging into casement, awning, hopper. Uh, all right, so uh, this one here is a horizontal slide. So you can have one side that moves or both sides that move. Casement is a swing. The casement opens like a door. All right. So whenever you uh, a casement window opens from top to bottom. 
my opinion, uh, casement windows are the best type of window. Uh, why do you think that? Why do you think I think casement is better than any other type of window? That's the main reason. That's a great reason. What did you say? To get out in the emergency. Oh, okay. When you open up a, a, a casement window, the entire window is open, so you can step completely out of it. It's a lot bigger for, e for egress. That's number one. Number two is it has a mechanical lock. So you literally reel it in, and it's hard to open, and then it has a mechanical lock on top of that. Unlike double hung windows, where it just has the little mechanical lock at the top, it's, they're easier picked. They're also easily broke. Um, those, those, you know, so in my opinion, they're more secure than a uh, double hung window as well. And they also, since they, you crank them in tight and they have a seal all the way around, and they don't have two sashes that come up against each other, it also seals a lot better than other types of windows. So in my opinion, casement windows are the best window for air sealing and security and then also egress. And egress is probably one of the more important ones. An awning type, okay, uh, I don't know why they didn't put all these on one page. An awning type, is a window that hinges at the top. It's like a casement window, but the window opens like this. So you crank it out and it opens and it looks like an awning over the top of the door. All right? A hopper is the exact opposite of an awning. Uh, on, that's all the old schools when I was going to school that, but they all had hopper windows. You open the top and it pushed out and, it, and a hopper is the opposite of an awning. If rain hits it, it all goes in. An awning, when it comes out, Rain hits it, it all goes out. Does that make sense? It hits at the bottom of the top. They got. Why do you think they got rid of all of the awning or the, all of the uh, hopper type type windows in schools? Because the rain was coming in. They weren't rainy. Hard to get out. You can't get out of it. It's almost impossible. You got to climb out and over the over it, and that means like, you're you're on the glass, so it breaks. Uh, when you're when you're crawling out of it, so they went to all awning types because then you can just put your head out and fall out the window instead of. Now I'm sure that the reason why they had them to begin with is you can't fall out an awning window, mm. or you can't fall out a hopper window without breaking the glass. So I'm sure that you know in 1910 oh, or 19. Whenever they were putting all these windows into these schools, they were like, oh, yeah, we definitely want these windows like this because no kids can fall out. And on the opposite side, you know, 75 years later, they went, we got to get rid of all those windows because we can't get out of the building. We weren't worried about burning kids up. Now we're worried about burning kids up. So, when you're doing these, these hinge type windows, you have to worry about what you're doing outside. Is there trees, is there limbs, is there, uh, do you, are you gonna put awnings over your windows? You know, is there something that might interfere with the window when it opens? Uh, most of the time, you don't have to worry about this because what are you gonna have within two feet or three feet of your building? Nothing. When you build a building, you're digging out the, the ground, you're doing all this other stuff. Now, if you are coming back in and planting big trees around, shrubberies or anything like that, you might want to worry about it. But for the most part, the only thing you got to worry about is your awning. It is your awning that goes over. I've never had one hit, but. All right, hopper windows we just talked about. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I will tell you what it is. It is a the old style windows that were in trailers and they were just glass and you cranked them and they had like six or eight different slats and they all cranked out individually and they're terrible. They should have never been um, invented. Matter of fact, I can pull up a picture real quick. Are these like in um, like motor homes and stuff like that too? Yep. And like old buses or something? Yep, yep. Uh, Uh, 
see they're not even showing the ones that I like right there. Can you see that? They're just glass. Uh, like this one. See, those are just pieces of glass that are. Um, it, it, they just literally crank out like a like a mini blind. Now there's no seal in between these for the most part, so that so they let a lot of air in. They let a lot of air in, and they get broke real easy, and they uh, and they also the cranks mess up on them, and there's all kinds of reasons why you don't want to have any of these. I don't I don't think this is you can't even put anything like this in a coat. <clears throat> Fixed windows are windows that don't open. Um, a lot of times people might call them a picture window. Um, like these right here behind us are fixed windows. Uh, there's no egress portion, but they do let in a lot of light. And with a fixed window, you don't have the, the buttons in them. You know, or you can, you can have with buttons or without buttons. But it gives you a much bigger uh, view of what's going on. Because you don't have any mechanical parts for it. So they're a lot cheaper, but they're not good for egress. Like in my living room, I have a big picture window in the middle, and then on both sides of it, I have a, I have double hung windows. The big picture window is, you know, it's great because you can see out of it. There's nothing obstructing your view. But when you need air, we open up the two sides. They're also cheaper because there's no mechanical parts. You don't have to worry about them breaking because there's no mechanical parts. I'm against mechanical parts in general, which is kind of crazy because I just told you that the casement, in my opinion, is the best window and it has the most mechanical parts. But its mechanical parts are actually metal and crank, where a lot of the other mechanical parts in a vinyl window are plastic or vinyl or you know, that, that they don't really work very good. But in general, I, I am all for as least moving parts as possible. Um, and that's on everything. And I started that from when I was in college. I shot archery professionally all over the country. And um, we had all kinds of mechanical parts we were putting on our bows and we were doing all this stuff. And every time I would go someplace, something would break and I would have to fix it. So then a, you know, one, an old guy goes, you realize this, this thing here has no mechanical parts and it's never broke. I don't have to fix anything. And I kind of looked at it and I started moving everything away from mechanical parts to fixed and I stopped having problems. So from that point on, when I look at a truck, I go, you mean you got a, a handle on your tailgate? That's just gonna break, I don't want that. You got a step in your tailgate? I don't want that. Oh, you got a toolbox built in the side of your truck? I don't want that. All that stuff breaks, and well, how are you gonna fix it? You gotta fix it, because it's on your truck and it's, you mean, if the door doesn't shut, you got to take it and get it fixed. I don't want any of that stuff. I want non-moving parts. Everything fixed. Will the door shut and jump out the window? Like a NASCAR nice driver? Like Luke's hazard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everything is just like basic? If you want things to last a long time, less moving parts are better. I mean, basic like, model of everything? Well, that's what I try to do. I mean, if I'm going to build Perfect. something, if, it all depends on what we're doing, guys. If I'm building a custom home, I'm going to do whatever the homeowner wants. If I'm building a spec home, or if I'm building a home that's my rental that I'm going to keep forever and rent, I want no moving parts. Because somebody's going to break it. Right now, uh, I've never had a washer and dryer that had a lockable lid. I mean, I've always said, no, don't buy that. that lock's just going to break, and then that's something we're going to have to fix. So I always kind of push my wife away from washers and dryers that have lockable lids on. Well, this last time I didn't pay any attention, she bought one. Last week, my son walked in and grabbed the lid and picked up on it while it was going and broke the lock. So we, she's been on the laundromat for like three days now because that lock has no function on the washer, but now the washer won't work because the lock's broke. That's the kind of movable stuff that I'm, I'm severely against. <clears throat> All right. So, standard window height is six foot eight. What else is six foot eight? Standard 
door guides, right? So for the most part, on an eight foot house, your doors and your window tops will all be the same height. It works out really good for your siding because it makes everything look, everything is, is uh, um, comparable. Uh, you know, your eye fits it, it makes your eye, your body likes symmetrical things. Uh, I should say most people's body likes symmetrical things. You have a, uh, you have two different personalities. You have a, there's a, that, 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 uh, I can't remember the two names. One, one type of person uh, is, wants everything neat, square, plumb, level. Then you have another type of personality that doesn't really care. Type A, type B. No, no, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's easy, I, it's easy, I, I can't pronounce Thank it. You. No problem. I got it in my head and it, it will come out of my tongue. And then Agna, uh, I can't I know, I know what they are, I just can't, I can't pronounce them. Um, but your brain tends to make you want, okay, imagine a front door of a new house right now. Okay, you got a front door? Anybody picture a window with an oval, a door with an oval window in it? What's a, does anybody have an oval window in their front door? I've seen them. Yeah. In the 1990s, all of the houses had big oval windows in them. Okay? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes like they right were designed. They're right in the yeah. middle. Like an oval. Like you know what I'm talking about? So, uh, your brain. Uh, another front door is probably you got like six panels in it, and then maybe even a little eye latch thing in the middle, and you, you know, a little metal thing in the middle of the little door. I mean, everybody's going to pick out something in their brain, and whatever that is, is what you're going to want to try to make your house look like, all right? whatever you're doing. So, for the most part, uh, windows and doors are the same way. You're going to pick something out in your head, and you're, it's probably going to be just like the house three. You see it every day. Dang. Golly, I can't. Uh, anyway, it's a personality that makes things all fit. Um, typically, the bottom of the window is about two foot six from the ground. Um, that's about the same height as the kitchen table. Um, and then, if you look, kids to adults, when you're sitting, you can see out the window. That's typically the way you want your house to be. Now, I will say I've been in houses, people do whatever they want. They do whatever they want, when they want. Um, so we have these standard rules and we try to match, but then you got these people that have the opposite of the personality I was just talking about. They're, they don't care about what my sister is one of them. I love her to death, my oldest sister. Uh, I'll look at her and go, can't put that window there. Kids can't see out. I don't have any kids. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, my kids come in your living room and they gotta look out the window, they can't see out that window. It's five foot off the ground. I mean, I gotta stay on my toes to look at it, but I like the way it looks. Yeah, but it's, it doesn't function. Maybe she feels more secure. No, the window right next to it was all the way to the floor. Okay. And it, it, it has nothing to do with it. I mean, it just, she doesn't see things like, you do. like everybody else. Uh, she wanted a flat roof on her house. And I kept saying, you don't want a flat roof. It's going to leak. It's going to leak. Flat roof is going to leak. And she says, I don't care. If, I don't care about that. This is what I want it to look like. Okay. We'll put a flat roof on. Uh, so... We measure energy efficiency on windows through a U factor. We talked last week on the on walls. We do uh, walls on an R factor. You, uh, uh, windows are done on a U factor. Um, and it has to do with how much UV. No, it has nothing to do with UV. It's a radiant uh, heat loss. Versus, because uh, you have you have 
he gained and he lost. So it's a weird fake factor. We're going to go over all that in, uh, I don't want to spend about nine hours talking about it, but we're going to go over that in green energy, green co construction class. We'll talk about all the U factors, how they come up with them, all that other stuff. But for the most part, you have single pane, which is just a single pane of glass. Then you have dual pane, which means there's two pieces of glass. And typically, there's some type of heavy inert gas that they put in between. Argon is probably the most common. But um, they actually suck all that, you know, and they put the two windows together. There's a little track around the outside. They glue them together. They put basically a um, basketball nozzle in it. They suck all the air out. Side, they pump argon into it. Why do you think they're putting an inert gas in between the two windows? Because it doesn't heat, doesn't affect heat, it doesn't transfer heat. As well. As well. It's heavy. So anything that's heavy doesn't move around much. So convection nitrogen. is, uh, yeah, nitrogen, I don't know that. But um, uh, anything that's heavy doesn't move around very fast when it gets hot. So that affects convection in the window. So it stops or slows down the sweating of windows, condensation of windows. All right. Um, and then you can always put exterior windows on the outside. Um, anything that you can do to add to it. We also have triple pane glass. So then they'll put uh, an argon or a low E uh, on both of them or in between them. Triple pane. I've never seen quadruple pane windows, but I know that they're out there. Um, and we're talking about major heat savings whenever you do this kind of stuff. Um, because now we have two heavy gases to transfer the heat from one side to the other instead of just one. Um, Also, tents. This one. Triple gate glazed windows in cold climates can reduce heat loss by 15 to 30 percent. That's pretty huge. Um, double glazed glass meet uh, where weather where weather meet needs and code specifications in warmer to moderate climates. So we're in a moderate climate. Um, you'll hear me say this multiple times over the next couple of years. I-64 to Effingham is the what we call the break-even point. So there's just as many heating days as there is cooling days. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, anything below I-64 for definite, and it's probably more like I-70, um, is uh, there's more cooling days than there are. So what does that mean to you guys? That means our electric bill is higher than our heat bill, or we have more heat gain than heat loss. Now, we're in that area right now where I say we're about break even. From us to Effingham is almost the exact same. So we gotta worry about uh, air conditioning and heat. If you get above Effingham, you're concentrating on we're worried about. So, what does that mean for us? That means white roofs here, north of Effingham, dark colored roofs. Lighter colored roofs, darker colored roofs. Uh, lighter color siding, darker colored siding. Uh, our, heat, our air conditioners have to be bigger. But, uh, you mean, or if you go north of 64, you're probably worried about having a more efficient heating and air system than you are. Air conditioning. Low E glazing um, is basically tint. We're the tint. We can tint uh, uh, windows with UV reflective. We can do we can do reflected uh, mirrored glass on the outside to try to kick all of it out. You know, like I said, it depends on where you're at. Because um, if I live in Alaska. 
I don't want any tin on my window. I want to gain as much heat from the sun as I can get. All right. On the opposite side, if I live in Florida, I want mirrored glass. I want everything reflected out. So you know, that, that all depends on where you're at. Lots of, and you could also position these windows on your house so that, you know, well, in the winter, we're going to get more sun. In the summer, we're going to get less sun. You know, however you want to do it. It's called passive building. So the NR, NFRC has got the label, and it tells you, I mean, your performance ratings and your U rating and all that kind of stuff. Screens um, keep insects out. I often laugh and go. Uh, my wife is always about having screens on the house, and I always look at her and go, "When do we, when do we ever have our windows open? When you burn something? I mean, that's about it. I don't have a storm door on my house. We don't have we don't have storm doors on our house. And we don't leave the doors open. We got the air conditioner running or the heaters running. They're never in between. I'm I'm serious. Well, uh, you know, people, my guy upstairs, the ag teacher goes, "Oh yeah." Turn my heat off today, and I go. Turn your heat off. It's 50 degrees outside. Yeah, we won't. Uh, we won't burn our heat for the rest of the year. What are you talking about? And you go. Yeah, we won't turn our air conditioner on until June 1st. Fuck that. <laughs> if it's 74 degrees, that air conditioner is old. That's why we have. Um, yeah. But my point of all that is, you know. Screens, if you're going to use outside air, uh, screens are very nice. We typically, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure that it's different for family to family. I'm sure there's some families that have the screen door, the front door open, and the fan going, and you know, and all the windows open all spring. And not me. I have allergies. That is like misery. I have allergies from my air conditioner, so that's why I would like try and keep like my furnace and my air conditioner. Like My wife tried to put our clothes on a clothesline one year, <laughs> and I said, I was coughing and sneezing, and I said, get that shit, put it in the dryer. You know, I don't want pollen all over my shirt when I pick it up in the morning. That's like, since I've been at home the past two days, like, I'm, my nose is like running from my uh, ear because of just the way it is. Well, you, I mean, you need to work on your, um, your humidifier then. You need to adjust the humidity. I don't have to worry about that because we take like 12 showers a day. Um, okay, so if we look here, here's a mullion where two windows go together, and this kind of shows you where the hinge is and points at the hinge. Okay, so in this case here, this is the case of the window. So it's pointing at the hinge and opens like this to the middle. Typically, that's the way it's going to work, is you're going to always open to the middle. Um, here is floor plan view of windows. Uh, if you look, it's just a line on both sides and a straight line between them. That's typically the standard symbol for a window. Window sizes. Whoo, this is tough, guys. Um, I'm, I don't get into all this like in really big detail. I'm sure that architects have to worry about a lot of this stuff that I don't know what I'm talking about. We don't have to worry about it that much. Um, masonry um, is plus eight inches. The glass opening plus eight inches. Um, rough opening is the glass plus six and a half inches. Screen opening is glass plus four inches. Sash is glass plus three inches. I don't worry about any of that. I don't care how big the glass is. Doesn't make me any difference whatsoever. We're, we're, we're builders. So that means when they, when they, when I order a window, I told you this last week. Rough opening is two is uh, is a half inch bigger than the window if it's a wood window. If it's a vinyl window, it's the same size as the window. So if you order a three foot by five foot, it's the rough opening on a vinyl window is three foot by five foot. If it's a wood window, it's three Now, on steel and aluminum and all that other stuff, 
you'd better check. But that's the standard rule for vinyl and wood. And to be honest with you, I would say upwards of 70% of windows today, residentially, maybe even higher than that, are either a vinyl or a wood window. It's a wood window with a vinyl client on the outside or a totally vinyl window. Uh, there's the, it's the most economic way to do it. Uh, now, uh, time is it? Um, you got all these details and all this other stuff, and I'm sure architects have to know more. Uh, and we used to have to know more because I said we, not me. In my lifetime, I have never had to build a window on site. All right? My dad's lifetime, when he was younger, they would actually physically build a window on site. You buy the glass. When he was, and I'm, and I'm saying in the 60s, 1960s, uh, my grandfather built all of the windows. So you went, to, you went to town and bought the pieces and parts of the window, and you cut them, and you put them all together, and you sealed them, and you had weights that went down the wall for counterweights. It was all that kind of stuff. You actually physically built the window on site. We don't have to do all that, so we don't need to know as much as they did to know about a window, because we're going to buy the window and set it in the hall, make sure it's level and square, plumb, and make sure it physically opens really good, and it probably doesn't even have to be that level. Nail it off, and we're good to go. Uh, unlike what they had to do, where they actually had to physically cut all the 45s and put the window in and glaze it in uh, with the glazing compounds and all that kind of stuff. Here's a window door schedule. We've already been over them. I went over it the other day on, uh, on the plan. Now, do you need to know all the pieces and parts of the window? Probably not. But I am going to tell you that they come up on occasion. Somebody will say, hey, the sash is broken. look at it you go look at it um, I just ordered windows from uh, Rupert's Mart and the sash was broken and they looked at me and I look in the of my truck and I go hey this sash is broken and I handed it to him and he goes oh we'll order you a new sash well, that's fine here's the window well you just take it with you and when we get the new sash you can put it in wherever you get it no mm -hmm. it was a casement window them and said, no, I ordered an unbroken window. When the window is unbroken, I'll come back and pick it up. He goes, well, you know, I said, I don't care if you send it back to the manufacturer. I don't care if the manufacturer builds it. I don't care if it takes eight weeks. I am not fixing this window. I ordered a window that is not broken. This one's broke. Okay, okay, that's what we'll do. And I went to pick it up six weeks later. Um, and I think I was like, you don't realize that took us like four hours to fix that sash. That was tough. <laughs> didn't realize it. I said, no shit. <laughs> and you wanted me to do that, stand on the side of a building on a lap. You, they wanted me to install it and and uh, and fix the sash after it was up on the building. Like, Forget that. So you need to know how this stuff works. But mainly the reason is because you wouldn't have thought. I thought, oh, I just got to take a couple screws out, a couple bolts, and go put it back on. That ain't how it works. This stuff intertwines to each other, it, most of it. Now, vinyl window sashes, you can just pop a couple uh, things out of them, it pops right out. But, you know, some of these wood sashes and, and uh, stuff, I mean, you're, you're talking about a, it's a full-blown, all-day-long deal. And everything you touch is either glass or got to be caulked, or it's got a rubber seal. If you break the rubber seal, then you got to go order a new rubber seal because it's going to leak. It's it's a head thing. Um, jam extensions. Uh, we get into this a lot with uh, two by six walls or uh, vinyl windows. The window itself, like this window, looks like it's designed for a two by four wall, uh, but this is a two by six wall or a two by eight wall. So you have to come in and build the window out on the inside in order to trim out the edge of it, I mean, to make it look right. A lot of times we do what they call jam returns with the drywall. We return the drywall all the way back to the window because it's cheaper. 
But uh, if you're going to have wood trim around the window, you got to run extensions out. By the windows, you always have to put extensions on because they're only about this thick. Wood windows typically are built for a uh, 4 9 16 jam, which is a three and a half inch opening with a half inch drywall and a half inch uh, plywood. Uh, so they're normally built for that, but um, for the most part, uh, vinyl windows, you always have to put jam extensions on. Alright, we're going to stop right there with installing windows because i got three or four things I want to talk about. See you guys on tomorrow. Tomorrow. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it snows like eight inches tonight. That would be awesome. You just stay home. Plan chili tomorrow so we can Wait, stay home. Tomorrow plan chili? So we can stay home. Oh. Oh, yeah. I got to go to the grocery store today. No, no. I am so tired of you holding my phone. Oh, yeah. I'm not arguing with you. What I mean by staying at home is not coming to work. If, if it was like nice outside, where I'm not outside, absolutely. I, well, I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying it's not coming to work. Staying home for me is not coming to work. Hey, I'm not going to stay home. You know, you, you did say we were going to have to start that off.